the day after, and he went out and he went over a mine and killed him. And that was really a bad deal there, um, obviously, on that. And his, his story was he was initially a Cuban refugee, and he had just uh, received a letter that his wife had a baby, and he hadn't seen the baby or anything, you know. So, of course, that made it even more tragic, you know. Um, but those, are, those happen quite often, actually. But uh, then again, another time was um, when we were ambushed um, out uh, on a road. We were going down and we were just surprisingly ambushed and we uh, were pinned down and we had to call in air support. We was actually guarding a minesweeping team that was several hundred yards out in front of us when they didn't have weapons with them. And I know there was an enemy squad that was moving down towards them. We were really uh, in a terrible situation at the time. And so I ran, I took about two, three hundred rounds of ammunition and I ran up to where they were. And I wasn't given an order to go up there. I just, it just seemed the natural thing to do. You know, I was in a position up there. I had it, I'm very familiar with it. I used an M60 machine gun. So I grabbed, you know, like I said, two, 300 rounds, threw them over my shoulder and ran up there to where the guys were pinned down. You know, and just, I was able to put out enough fire, you know, suppressive fire at the time that permitted them as well as myself to get back to the the primary location of our group. And I was awarded the Bronze Star with B device for that act. And like I said, uh, not setting me aside from anybody else because I think all soldiers in one way or another are doing comparable things over there, you know, that could be viewed as heroic acts, so. I feel, man, I was really lucky. I mean, seriously, I, you know, I don't know if every soldier feels that way, but there are so many times I was so lucky I should not have made it, you know, um, and I did. And uh, so I guess in that regard, you know, I feel, I feel that I was really lucky over there. And my training certainly did take over, but beyond the training, it was just a matter of the draw, you know. I mean, for example, like a command, a mine that had um, minesweepers out in front of us in vehicles, and uh, you could see the line right where they buried the cable right across the road, and yet the minesweepers, for some unknown reason, at, actually missed it that time. And uh, we just lucked out and spotted it and stopped. And then it ended up with a 250-pound bomb, you know, that was, you know, located and removed, you know, from the area. But that could have been just totally tragic. I mean, it would have been tragic, no doubt. I remember driving over one place, um, I was a machine gunner on a Jeep, and we drove over this one mine, and behind us was a three-quarter ton, and I remember they hit, they set the mine off on them. I think it was Command Debt. They set it off, and I remember swinging around, and uh, you could see a big black cloud of smoke, and the guys flying right up through it, you know. I, th I just think I was, in, the training was important, very important, and I would encourage anybody that goes in the military to pay attention to all the classes and listen. And then the luck, you know, you're either lucky or you're not.